Greetings, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Mistake Zone, your weekly dose of our lives and the mistakes within them. My name is Jaron Wade. Joining me, as always, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Matt Alba. Hey, Matt. Yo. How are you doing? Yo, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Matt, that's great. Feeling a bit flustered. I caught myself (laughs) thinking that I said our introduction wrong, Matt, Mm. because I was thinking about the Grand Splatfest, because Matt... Oh, the what? Got a... Got to pour one out for Splatoon 3. It's oh, been no. one heck of a run, Matt. Mm-hmm. The final Splatfest just concluded, I believe, this week. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, I'm pretty sure it goes into maintenance mode now. No new content. Can't necessarily... Matt, mm-hmm. I should probably fact check on our audio journal. But at the same time, all I know is what a heck of a run, Matt. Matt. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you played Splatoon three? Oh, I, I don't. I think it's like around the time it came out. I think I might have started it up, uh, but I don't think I've played a match in a very, very long time, Jared. Fair enough, Matt. Mm-hmm. I'm taking this from at Splatoon NA after two incredible years of Splatoon three. Regular updates will come to a close. Don't worry. Splatoween, Frosty Fest, Spring Fest, and Summer Nights will continue with some returning themes. Updates for weapons adjustments will be released as needed. Big run, extra work, and monthly challenges will continue for the time being. Ooh, Matt? Jaren. Mm-hmm. Did you look into the final Splat Fest? Yes, I just looked at what the Grand uh, Festival or Grand Splat Fest like, theme was. Which I think is a right. good theme. I think it's a good theme. The theme is uh, past versus present versus future. Yep. Jaren, I disagree with the winner. <laughs> Matt, mm-hmm. if there's one thing we've learned here on the Mistake Zone, uh-huh. it's nostalgia. Hell of a thing, Matt. <laughs> Hell of a thing. Hell of a thing. Uh, Matt, mm-hmm. do you think nostalgia carried Team Past? I think nostalgia hard carried Team Past. Realistically, if you were still in... Splatoon 3. Mm-hmm. Now, going back to that one episode we did when you went on vacay, <laughs> uh-huh. what team would have you joined for the Grand Festival? I would have joined Team Present. Right. Because, Jaren, the future is scary. You know, we're past the past, Jaren. We can't, we, we can't go back, no matter how much we want to. Matt, mm-hmm. you know what they say? One of my favorite sayings is, <laughs> can't go back home, Matt. Can't go back home. Can't go back home. So, you know, Jaren, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta be in the present. You gotta live in the present. Man, I love the Squid Sisters <laughs> too much. <laughs> I probably would have joined Team Pass. Oh man! Oh no, Jared! Jared, you can't, you can't stay there. You can't stay there, Jared. Can't go back home, Matt. Can't go back home. But mm-hmm. we can go back to the mistake zone mm-hmm. once again, Matt. Another week full of mistakes. Got asked. Mm-hmm. What have you been up to, friend? Jared, have you ever just like? started a game became immediately disgusted by something you saw and then not wanted to play that game anymore i not necessarily a game Mm -hmm. i've done that with anime definitely okay yes Uh, i've done that with television programming Mm -hmm. and potentially movies probably movies Mm -hmm. but if it's a level of disgust where I immediately stop, I feel like the play would be to immediately erase it from uh, my memories mm-hmm. and try to suppress that as much as I can. But Matt, mm-hmm. something tells me uh, you have recent experience with this. Yes. Jaren, as you know, um, later on, we are going to be talking about uh, something that I, I sunk way too much time into and I think you're sinking time into too as yes. well. And sure, you know, I have to be efficient. So I was looking up idle games, like not I D O L games, like we would yeah. usually talk about on this show, but I D L E games. To, you know, play in the background. So of the the cookie clicker mm-hmm. variety, the time clicker mm-hmm, variety. Mm-hmm. Matt, I, I still can't believe Time Clicker <laughs> is one of my most quote unquote played games on Steam. Oh man. Jared, I think one of my favorite like most played um game goofs on Steam is like how many people have Wallpaper Engine as their most played game. Fair enough. Matt, mm-hmm. it's versatile. Mm-hmm. It's versatile. I believe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so 
you're looking for an idol game. Yes. Did anything scratch that numbers go up itch, Matt? Jaren, actually, there were like two games that scratched that numbers go up itch, which are Idol Breakout and Tristram, which Breakout is like, you know, that like old game where it's just like, you know, the paddle knocking the going against the ball and you're like breaking bricks. Um, at the animation version of that, pretty good. Tristram is kind of just like a dungeon delving uh, idol game, which I think is actually very, very good and could be easily, what do you call it? I guess fleshed out into a full game. Uh, okay. Like, it's like based on like the Diablo property, like the Diablo main town of Tristram. But, oh, really? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's like very themed in like that kind of same kind of like gothic i guess is like the theme that diablo has i think that's like fair to say right. like that same kind of theme as well it's like very very like well styled i think the the gameplay itself is very good honestly that is the closest to a real game i've ever seen an idle game being like i don't know matt with time clickers <laughs> i i was getting power-ups to watch more numbers go up there's uh, nothing more realer than numbers going up not man jaren i think like that that game is honestly is like it's I think it's a crime that that game is free. Is it? Yeah, no. because Jaren, I, I was looking for free to free to play idle clickers that I uh, or idle games that I could I could just have running. But Jaren, the the game that I <laughs> was disgusted by was Boba Simulator. Matt, uh huh. When you say the two words together, Boba and Simulator, mm-hmm. one I like me a good cup of boba. Yeah. And two, I feel like I not uh-huh. <laughs> this is going to be weird, mm-hmm. but before you go on, mm-hmm. when you hear a blank simulator game, mm-hmm. what does the word simulator in a game's title mean to you or represent to you in 2024? I honestly just think of like, you know, the the onslaught of simulator games that we've had uh like you know truck simulator train simulator farming simulator like those kind of simulator games rather than something like you know the more meme ones like um right. goat simulator or i want to say power wash simulator is more meme than it is serious but like there's so much power power wash simulator stuff that i think it is also a very serious game but so mm-hmm. at least to you matt in 2024 the simulator name is still pure it's still uh-huh. doing what it means to do in simulating what its theme is supposed to be mm-hmm. where i i don't know matt i feel like i'm personally tainted when i hear the word simulator i immediately go to the meme variety mm-hmm. the goat simulator and you know it might be debatable but i'll still go to something like you know, cooking simulator or supermarket simulator. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Where I'm, I'm expecting lo- poor graphics, uh, wonky physics, and mm-hmm. the ability to throw stuff at your quote unquote customers. Mm-hmm. But uh, for Boba Simulator, Matt, uh-huh. where does it fall in that scale, Jaren? I think it is a very casual simulator. Uh, the the sim the game itself is basically you're just running a boba shop. And you're kind of just like, you know, setting up your drinks and letting it automate sell to people. Right. Or, Jaren, I that's what I've grasped from the, um, you know, preview I, I watched of that game before I opened it and then immediately closed it. Okay. <laughs> because, Jaren, when I opened this game, you know, it's going to set you to some, like, default stuff when you first start your, your boba shop. And, Jaren, the fact that the drink that they default you to is an $18 milk tea. <laughs> Made me feel so bad that I felt like I I didn't want to play this game out of moral principle. That ain't right, Matt. That ain't right. Jaren, that's Matt, insane. Mm-hmm. As a audio journal that is strictly about consumerism <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. these days, uh, Matt, what's your price point? W- what price do you feel comfortable paying for bubble tea in 2024? I think that honestly, like thirteen to fifteen is like maybe the, my like high end point for a a bubble tea. Like, and that's like when I'm considering on being like a like a slightly fancy one. Okay, fair. Not. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing this eighteen dollar milk tea. It was just bare minimum. 
uh, and that's what really got to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jaren, I I couldn't believe what I was seeing when it said, "Hey, this is gonna be eighteen dollars for this very basic milk tea," and I, and, you know, a standard cup, nothing nothing fancy looking about it, and I couldn't believe that uh, they were doing this. And Jaren, I don't know if it's just my bias in like how I look at the internet, but I was looking at that, even though you know we're Canadian. I was looking at that in USD, and that made me feel oh. even worse. Even icky, more icky, Matt. Mm-hmm. Even more icky. Mm-hmm. So needless to say, you weren't simulating owning your own boba stand, no. I guess. No, no. Oh. That's a shame, Matt. Mm-hmm. But you have some idle clickers that are on your table. Matt, what were they again? So I can add them to my Steam. Um, It was Idle Breakout and Tristram. Both free, Matt? Both free, both free. Both free available now. Can't wait to see how many hours I quote unquote played of these two titles by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. Matt, Mm -hmm. now that I opened the floodgates to our weekly consumerism update, because of course I would, (laughs) uh, Matt, Mm -hmm. to celebrate my partner's birthday, I got them a Pokemon booster box of the new English TCG set, which is Stellar Crown. And Matt, Mm -hmm. this is the first time we purchased a booster box. You know, before we've done the elite uh, trainer boxes, you know, those small booster, I guess, packs Mm -hmm. that come like six in a box. But this was a full on, hey, um, just buy booster box, 36 packs in all. Mm -hmm. And Matt, Mm -hmm. gotta say, uh, we bought this off a vendor off, you know, Facebook Marketplace and Matt. Mm-hmm. service impeccable i don't want to blow up his Ooh. spot but maybe i should but uh paid a bit under you know msrp and he literally delivered them oh damn wow. release but uh-huh you know it, it's a local vendor uh but i believe he drove so you know where i'm located matt mm-hmm. i think to pick up his case of you know the pack is called stellar crown or the release I believe he drove to the general vicinity of the Saturday morning arcade clubhouse to pick up his case, drove back to the general vicinity of the Mistake Zone HQ, Uh and literally, I turn on my porch lights at midnight, go out to greet him. He breaks open the case and says, hey, pick which box you want. Oh, man. Uh Service impeccable. Uh He just made a, um, you know... A repeat customer because I believe this November, Matt, uh-huh. there is another release that I'm tempted because there is a really nice uh, Lucia card. But mm-hmm. before we get into that, mm-hmm. uh, this is the first time we bought a booster box. And, you know, my partner, their birthday, grabs a fresh pack, opens the first one, and that. Mm-hmm. We, you know, go through the cards and the final card in that booster box. Mm-hmm. is the special Terrapagus or whatever EX card. Matt, mm-hmm. the super rare card that is currently going for uh, close to 200 right now. Damn. And for that to be the first pack we ripped, Matt, uh-huh. we're still running that high. <laughs> where oh, man. when you open a pack that immediately pays for the entire booster box matt Mm -hmm. i think this awoken something really bad within (laughs) us really bad jared no oh we're mad (laughs) tell me the math works out right we open this card that whole box is free where i sent we sent it to all our pokemon adjacent friends and immediately they were like sold sell your other packs (laughs) so sell the other 35 packs oh man jared do you think it's better to have opened the uh, that card as your first pack or do you think it would have been more satisfying to open it as the last one see i go back and forth in this because to be honest man after we got you know this super hit the next few packs were relatively cold and that, mm-hmm. that's, how, that's how it goes mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. i think when <laughs> matt mm-hmm. this is gonna be a poor analogy <laughs> it's like when you win a game of you know, your first game of a battle royale of Fortnite, of PUBG. Yeah. And then stress is immediately off. You go into meme mode. Ooh, where... okay, okay, okay. I feel like with me personally, if this was opened last, I think the anxiety 
would get because we ended up opening for the next hour and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's that, oh, no, am I not going to break even? Was this a bad idea? Where I think just the pure luck for, your, you know, your very first pack, you open up the super rare card. Mm -hmm. uh, that gets you going, Matt. That gets oh, you going. Man. And even though the card I wanted most, which was like the special illustration or like, I don't know the proper rarity terms, but the lacy illustration card mm -hmm. didn't get that. We got the cool looking Squirtle, which... Uh, is a really nice looking card because Matt, I think we, my partner specifically collects the illustration rares. I see. You know, the secret variety, the ones that just look nice. I just like that. Mm -hmm. You know me, we've been friends for a while. I, I like the particular car, trainer cards of a certain variety. <laughs> so, <laughs> classic, um, <laughs> good, classic Jared. But yeah, Matt, I don't know. It was just seeing. Uh, my partner revealed a card and us just freezing in our tracks where it was an experience, Matt. I don't recommend it uh, <laughs> as long as, but if your finances are in check and, you know, you can spend responsibly, Matt, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like when you start off with the showstopper, you might get that itch to chase that high once again where, Matt, mm -hmm. it, it, the whole time it was me going through my toxic purchase justification of, oh, if I went to a casino, th this would have been gone and I would have walked out with nothing. But <laughs> now we have something, Matt. Mm -hmm. Now we have something. Oh, man. Uh, but I'll let you know in November when I, I don't know. I believe it's Paradise or Jagosa. Is, it just came out in Japan or it's shipping right now. Mm -hmm. And I really want that Lucia card. So uh, we'll see what the English turnaround is right now. But mm -hmm. Matt, mm -hmm. to support our, you know, toxic hobbies of consumerism. Yes. Uh, you know what we have to do, Matt? We have to work, uh -huh. unfortunately. Uh -huh. But to fill our anime quota for the month, mm -hmm. <laughs> really stretching that quota right now. <laughs> uh, Matt, we all, in addition to watching Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice last week. Mm -hmm. That's which, a good anime, yeah. Matt. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to go into it, but quick uh, question for you. Do you think Jenna Ortega is typecasted right now? Oh, Jaren, I'll be honest. Like, I don't really pay attention to her that much outside of, like, you know, her, like, seeing her in, like, a Wednesday and that, yeah. like, one presentation where she presented with Aubrey Plaza. Fair. And I'm guessing if she's in Beetlejuice, she's going to be playing, I guess, that exact same role. So maybe she is typecasted right now. But I was thinking about it, but you brought up Aubrey Plaza and that mm -hmm. I feel like Aubrey Plaza was able to escape her typecast and Jenna Ortega, I feel like she'll be okay. But mm -hmm. uh yeah, she she was essentially Wednesday <laughs> this movie, Matt. <laughs> oh man. Mm -hmm. The following day, uh we saw someone doing work, Matt, because we watched a new, I don't know if it's new per se, but it's based on a manga. And again, when a anime film comes to theaters for a limited release, it's usually brought to us by Crunchyroll for distribution. Mm -hmm. But last week we watched the Concierge, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, it's a relatively short movie. It's an actual easy watch, Matt, 70 minutes, but... It actually felt a lot longer than the actual runtime was. But okay. the concierge, it follows our protagonist, Akino, as she starts her job at this new department store as a, you know, a concierge. Mm -hmm. And the thing about this department store, Matt, is it is one that its clientele is all animals. So throughout the 70 minute runtime, we see Akino essentially interact with all these different shoppers we see what they're specifically they're looking for in the department store and how she goes out of her way to make their hopes and dreams come true. Just because mm -hmm. as the film progresses, we kind of learn more about the background of the, the department store overall, why it serves this specific clientele. And then, you know, it gets into playing with themes of repentance and really serving a certain clientele that might be underrepresented or in this case endangered so mm -hmm. while there is a lot of food of for thought there matt at its you know purely surface level this is 
essentially an OVA of a girl um, trying to serve this department store's clientele and how she gets around to meeting what could be seen as impossible tasks. And of course, Matt, as someone who, or as two people who have worked retail uh, environments before, Mm -hmm. you know, you do have that sub storyline that deals with the quote unquote Karen uh, Uh, archetype. mm -hmm. And it's that play of the realization of sure, you need to go all in on serving that customer. But what does that mean to the customers around them? And you know, that relationship. So Mm -hmm. again, it's a really easy watch. I really like Akina. I really like all the different animals that she interacts with, not only animals, but also the other human employees of the department store. And what I really do appreciate is throughout the 70 minute runtime, you meet all these different animals and they all come together for essentially the last segment. And that Mm -hmm. I love it when a good ensemble comes together, characters who, you know, don't necessarily have business with one, uh, with one another, each come together at the end for a common goal. Mm -hmm. And you know me, Matt, as much as, uh, I give that really tough guy appearance <laughs> on the mistake zone. Uh, might have uh, sniffed a little <laughs> towards the end oh, um, with some certain, uh, I guess, just um, subject matter to come up. But yeah, again, The Concierge, really fun movie, really easy watch. I do recommend it if you're just looking for something um, that is, it's, it's a really, it isn't, that much of an investment to do so if that's something up to your alley you know check it out i believe the manga is two volumes so if that's something you want oh, okay. to read as well uh really short really self-contained uh but matt mm-hmm. the ending references mm-hmm. the introduction and matt, all i'm gonna say is didn't see uh that full circle moment coming oh, uh, man. so that's also uh fun uh you know, way that it diverts from ex- the expectations it starts off in the beginning. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Uh, check it out. I think limited run in theaters, but it will probably come to Crunchyroll to stream, I think. Mm-hmm. Can't confirm that. Yeah. But yeah. Matt, mm-hmm. speaking about anime adjacent things, mm-hmm. uh, last week I, I don't want to say briefly touched upon <laughs> a gotcha game, mm-hmm. but I feel like this week, Matt, uh, you have also touched oh. the same gods again, <laughs> despite you saying uh, oh. that you specifically won it last week. But Matt, mm-hmm. of course, I'm talking about Zenless Zone Zero from MiHoYo. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of months old now, I told everyone my adventures to roll Jane Doe from the current featured gotcha. And Matt, uh-huh. <laughs> Don't want to say how much it took, but oh, let's just say I've added Jane Doe to my roster, and now I have have a few more hours under my belt. I, I'm currently on the Chapter 2 interlude, but mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. you've known me and my relationship with Gotcha Games for, you know, a good portion now. Yes. Where for a lot of Gotcha Games, I'll see a character and immediately go saving up for that one character. Yes. Um, for Arknights, that was W. I don't have the... Matt? Mm-hmm. I think I have the list somewhere. Give me give me a quick second. Mm-hmm. Matt? Mm-hmm. I posted this to a group Discord on December 30th, 2020. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's and a long time ago. Mm-hmm. My message says, day 249 of saving for W. <laughs> 361 pulls saved and all the di- the breakdown of those pulls. And that, mm-hmm. uh, same for Genshin Impact. The moment I saw Ayaka, I immediately started saving until I rolled her banner, I don't know, close to a year later. And yes. Matt, mm-hmm. There's this one character you're introduced to uh, during the second chapter of Zemo Zone Zero. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, I am officially uh, day five of saving for this character. (laughs) (laughs) But before I get to that, Matt, Mm -hmm. um, I talked about it briefly, I guess at length last week, but 
Matt, uh huh. Why have you started playing Zumless Zone Zero, Jaren? I didn't want to. <laughs> you said it so last week, but I don't know, Jaren. I think, I think the the gambling aspect kind of just got me. I... Full circle, baby. Full circle. <laughs> you, you just need that one card pull to pay for the whole box. Oh man, Jaren. I, I don't know. I just like okay. Jane Doe being the limited banner right now as of this recording and her also being a not only, you know, like an S um rank character, but like we were saying, like an S tier character. Yeah. Made me really want to just, you know, if I'm going to get into Zenless Zone Zero for a reroll, I'm gonna do it now when there's a yep. limited limited banner character. So Jaren, I I did. I went in, I, you know, played an account to, you know, um, what do you call it? An account until the point where you could roll. And then I started yeah. rolling. And then I realized I did the kind of like rolling logic bad. I didn't get like, you know, the full 10 pull on um, the limited banner. I only got to like nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had like m- more of the, what do you call it? The, the st- whatever the standard banner. one is. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, okay, I... Like it didn't. It only took like maybe like thirty, forty minutes to to get to the pull point. So like, okay, I'm gonna roll another one of these, and I I like made another account. Jaren, I like salted my accounts, and I'm worried it's gonna get like these accounts banned. But if it does, you know that just frees me from You're Zenless free. Zone Zero. That was my really logic. Salted accounts worked. I I couldn't get it to work for myself. Um. I think maybe like when I did it, I was doing it on the actual like, what do you call it, um, Hoyoverse site. I wasn't doing oh, it through the client, okay. Fair. so maybe the client has some kind of protection if that's how you were doing it. But Jordan, I started salting them, and my my logic was that okay, you know what, I'm gonna salt these hands, I'm gonna keep rolling until I get either an like actual S tier character or I get Jane Doe, right? And in my second account. You know, I I got Soldier Eleven, which you know is an S rank character, but it's not an S tier character from Fair. like the list I was looking at. Yep. And then I was like, Jaren, I I then became curious in a different way because then I was like, how efficient can I be with my time? Yep. In rolling, and I went down more of a sketchy path in in terms of um. What is allowed in the terms of service? <laughs> Jaren. Allegedly. 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 Yeah. allegedly. Jaren, yeah. I wanted to test how multiboxing would work for this game. <laughs> so. You allegedly wanted to test how multiboxing <laughs> would work. Allegedly. I allegedly wanted to test how right. multiboxing would work. And <clears throat> so, you know, I, I allegedly ran two instances of the game at the same time. And. Jaren, I was actually very surprised at how <laughs> well this worked. You know, on one of these accounts, I didn't roll any uh, S rank characters, but like on the other one, I rolled uh, Koleda. Oh, I, she was the one I rolled on my main Genshin Impact account. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, I I saved myself some time because you know one of these accounts didn't even roll in S uh, tier character, right? So, I then wanted to see how far, how many, um, what do you call it, windows I could, oh no, I could push. So then before I, your computer started making noise, right? Yeah. So then I tried three. That one worked. I think, like of all my sets, this is probably like the best uh, set because I pulled uh, Liacon on one of the accounts, and then on the other account, I pulled uh, Coleda again with um, a. S rank, uh, what do you call it? W drive, which is like I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think if I'm gonna do do like play on another account, that's the one I'll use. Right, uh, Jaren. I then pushed it for four, which is uh, when I got the uh, Jane Doe pull. Nice and nice, man. Jaren, this is about like um, eleven accounts in now. If you're keeping count, <laughs> yep. And then I got to my final one, which is um, apparently all my computer can handle right now is five. Okay. Uh, and surprisingly, it topped out not from CPU, not from GPU, but from memory. So maybe, oh. Jared, 
if I put the memory of each, you know, uh, what do you call it, simulated phone down, maybe I can run more. <laughs> fair, Matt. Fair. But not. Mm-hmm. You're you're a man of science. Mm-hmm. You, you you had a hypothesis uh-huh. and you wanted to see how it would pan out. Mm-hmm. But not. Mm-hmm. W- w- what's the analysis? So, Jaren, across sixteen accounts. Seven of them were able to pull a uh, S rank character. Okay. Across the sixteen accounts, I only got one Jane Doe. That. Hmm. I still feel that like that's a W. Yeah, yeah, no, still good. That's I'm still good. That's the account that I uh, started to like push with. Um, okay. I ended up pulling Lyacon on that one this morning. Uh, All right. Because like you know who I'm who I'm running with right now as well. Jaren, I think the most surprising thing for me when I was playing on the. Um, Multi multiple uh, windows at once is I never realized how randomized the fights are mm-hmm. throughout the opening. I thought like you know this is the opening; it's all going to be preset fights. Right. So when the maps were different, or when um you know some fights had more phases than the other, that really uh, threw me off. Of course. And Jaren, I was always surprised when you know there's. Obviously, when I'm playing it this way, there's going to be one screen that I'm focusing on the most. Mm-hmm. And one, it's really cool when you happen to finish with all of them and you just get like all the wipeouts at once. That looks that's like a so really good, cool. Matt. So really good. cool. I tried to take screenshots of it, but it didn't work. Of course, Jaren. I wanted to kind of just like run one account with Wise to see if it was different or how different it is. But right. I kept getting worried on Jaren. I don't want to play as I don't want to play as wise. What if that's the count? I get the good characters on. That's true. That's true. So I couldn't risk it. So, so Jaren, I think I'll just never know. But, but Jaren, I think the thing that like threw me off the most is when the 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 account that I was focusing on the most for a fight was the last one I finished the fight in. Oh, okay. Oh man, but not mm-hmm. again. You hypothetically. And yes. allegedly put some science to the test. That, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a fun thought experiment. Jaren, there's like also one thing that really bummed me out during this test is that okay. about halfway through, uh, I think like right before I started my fourth and like uh, fi- four client, five client runs, that is when the, you know, that 1.2 preview, co- um, what do you call it? Code, for, it's like Tour de Inferno or something. Um, oh, there was a new code. Yeah, there was a code that lasted Damn. for two days apparently, and it ran I did out. Not know that in in the middle of my experiment. <sighs> that feels mm-hmm. bad, man. Feels it feels bad. bad. Feels bad. Really, really puts a damper on the this thought experiment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But not mm-hmm. uh, as I was saying, we're we're good boys here on the mistake zone. Uh huh. Uh huh. And. Now that our thought experiment has done, of yes, course, yes. we continue to play on our first accounts that mm-hmm. we created. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But Matt, mm-hmm. we've both put in some time with ZZZ, uh, Z3 now. Yes. Um, Matt? Oh, it's called Z3 since, now? Oh, I don't know what people are calling it. Oh, okay. Uh, I, as you, Similar to last week, I'm going to be going through different names, but we're talking mm-hmm. about you know, the new, we're talking about Z3 right now. I yes. Guess we, for our purposes, we'll say Z3. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, mm-hmm. I gave my brief thoughts last week, but how do you feel about the game overall? Jaren, the game plays a lot more differently than I thought it would. Mm-hmm. Um, When I was watching gameplay of this game, I kind of thought of it more as a standard character action game. I didn't right. realize how, I guess, like reactionary uh this game is and how much it revolves around playing around the um either the what do you call it the like kind of like switch in counter mechanic yep. or the um like perfect dodge mechanics uh yeah especially for characters like jane mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and for nikomada mm-hmm. uh i man I'll, I'll admit the mm-hmm. perfect dodge for Jane and Nikomata, mm-hmm. uh, makes me perfect dodging with any other character feel weird. It feel it doesn't feel right, Matt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As I kind of mentioned last week, these characters in particular, when you perfect dodge, it lets you do an immediate follow up attack. Yeah. And for combat flow, I feel like it feel it looks and feels 
satisfied Mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. uh, I'll do a perfect dodge with some of, you know, my other team members and it's okay. I just avoided damage. I don't feel (laughs) like I'm perfect. I'm really countering in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I need, maybe that's why I like Jane's play style so much. And maybe that's why I, I, I really favor the tag counters Mm -hmm. Uh, just because it actually feels like it's a lot more rewarding and allows you to continue uh, to be aggressive rather than be defensive with your dodge. But that's kind of just me. Mm -hmm. Like, I find it, like, very interesting once I realize that, like, it's not really a game, or at least, like, uh, when I was kind of, like, looking up how people are playing, a lot of people Mm -hmm. aren't playing in a way where you have just one person out for 80% of the time. Yeah. And then everybody else is um, there for, I want to say, like, support. They're not, like, mm-hmm. support characters, but, like, their their role is more so support. Like, I'm looking at a lot of, um, like, obviously, I'm looking at, like, the Jane teams, and it's seeing, like, okay, you're going to have, you know, Jane out for 80% of the time, but you're going to yep. switch in Grace to put on, yep. you know, the shock debuff, uh, switching in, like, Seth or whatever other support you want to pull in just for... Um, like their what do you call it their passive like their passive energy gen so you can kind of just dump their ex specials and yep. then you're switching back to your main dps that seems to be like how a lot of them are playing not not only just like you know jane doe um like teams but teams in general seem to be playing the, a lot that way which was kind of surprising to me when i when i like i guess like delved more into team building yeah, and I think that's what makes a character like uh, like a Khan, like Khan, mm-hmm. uh, really interesting. Just because he's a, I believe he, his archetype is a stun character. Mm-hmm. Like that, mm-hmm. even though he doesn't fit in my team per se, whenever there's a, you know, a fight that recommends you use an ice character, I'll always yeah. bring him in just because mm-hmm. he just looks so cool. Man, again, uh-huh. mentioned this last week this game is such a spectacle yeah you can see the fighting game influence but i feel like that's why i'm so attracted to it Mm -hmm. where matt got on record numerous times bad at fighting games combos confuse me still Uh (laughs) but the fact that you know you can simply mash your basic attack you, you know go into your x move when it's you know, generate it and then tag out and get the same dopamine you would see from executing a Marvel versus Capcom three combo. I would assume. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, Matt. It it's just <laughs> uh-huh. such a thing to look at and makes me become that monkey clapping uh, his hands together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where yeah, something like like Han. Uh, I don't have his timing down, Matt, but yeah. when I am able to mash his timing down, it looks so good. Man. Yeah. So good. Jaren, I, as much as I like Lacan, I really have a hard time actually playing as him. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, the fact that, you know, he's one of the characters that has, like, the hold mechanics on your attack button yep. instead of just, like, the tap, 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 tap mechanic mm-hmm. makes him feel, like, very different. And I'm not sure when I'm supposed to, you know, switch between taps and holds to to get the most potential out of his kit. That's that's the same with uh Kaleda too. I believe her mechanics are uh if you hold down every second or every fourth hit, she'll do an AoE as well. And I think that's what mm-hmm. I am kind of, you know, glad about the game is just the variety of the different play styles mm-hmm. that each of the characters uh, have. I know this is relatively still a new game, so there is a pretty low pool of characters. Say, yeah. Plus, you know, you have to luck into getting specific ones. But at the same time, each one of them so far has their own purposes. And yeah, that it is trying to get into that groove of I have my main DPS and I'm strategically tagging in to either do some support stuff or do some some buff stuff but Mm -hmm. when it comes together matt Mm -hmm. i think gameplay just looks great but then it's when you get to as i said last week um the actual gotcha-ness of the game or the mobile game aspect of it yeah Mm -hmm. there are a lot of different currencies there are a lot of different power-up currencies there are a lot of different stages for each of the different currencies yeah and 
It's one of those things where, you know, it's happened with me with any game I've played in, or mobile game I've played in the past where once you get your daily routine down, once you understand all the different um, currencies, power-ups and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, you know, it becomes second nature. But when you're a newcomer coming in, it's so overwhelming. And I feel like I'm unlocking new events, new currencies yeah. to kind of deal with where how have you been kind of tackling that onboarding progress or process? Jaren, I'm actually very surprised at how not confused I am about mm -hmm. um all these kind of like currencies and stuff. Right. Because I think they Jaren, first off, like, you know, me expecting this to be, you know, a lot more like a normal gotcha. I'm kind of very surprised. I don't know if all of the Mihoyo games are like this, but the amount of onboarding there is that is yep. energy free yes. is so surprising to me. I was expecting that I'm going to have to be doing, you know, these these like intro stuff for like a week or so. But the fact that it doesn't really cost you anything to or like, yeah, there's no energy cost to do the kind of like story progression, the mm -hmm. tutorial progression stuff. It's really surprising to me. Um, and I, I'm like really appreciative of that. So I can kind of just like. You know, play when I want to play as much as I want to play while I'm still, you know, learning the game. Yeah, I believe that was the same thing with Genshin where, you know, all the exploration um, and most of the story stuff wasn't really energy gated. It's only when you need to start, you know, getting your resources, farming mm -hmm. your resources. Those are what need um you know, the energy, the stamina system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where there are a lot of different resources, you know, you need ones for your character, for their skills, for, you know, your W drive, mm -hmm. the attachments to your W drive. So yeah, I think, you know, the onboarding is pretty, you know, they do have it at a certain pace that lets you learn things easily. But mm -hmm. once you're in the thick of it, Matt, it's trying to figure out what to prioritize of, uh -huh, uh -huh. oh, I have this much stamina. What do I need to work on? Do I need to level up my character abilities? Do I need to get uh, resources for my skills? And I think that's what I'm still trying to get a handle of what to prioritize. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but Matt, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, I guess, the story so far, how far have you pushed? Um, I have just finished the Soldier 11 stuff or the one of the, okay. like, the first parts of the Soldier 11 story. Alrighty. Um, so I'm not that far. I guess like I just also did the like upgrading your internet license. Right. Uh, like that's about where I am in the story right now. Okay. And so I'm mm -hmm. currently, as I said, intermission or the intermission of chapter two. So just finished uh, the main story for that. And mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I'm really excited for you to get to that part because it focuses on Coletta and her crew. But more importantly, Matt. Mm -hmm. Um. There is a particular cutscene that I can't wait to see <laughs> your reaction to, and we can discuss it when we get to it. Okay. But Matt, mm -hmm. This is one of those games. Uh, once you watch that cutscene, oh, okay. For everyone who's finished chapter two, I'm pretty sure they know what, what I talk about. Matt, uh huh. This is uh, this has a home in the mistake zone based <laughs> on that cutscene. But oh man. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just in uh, story so far in general, you know, we're following uh, these two hacker twins, I guess, siblings mm -hmm. with Wise mm -hmm. and Bell. Uh, of course, there's a quarantine zone that they're able to navigate through through their trusty bunny robot and their help, you know, get commissions from everyone on the internet, mm -hmm. meeting different raiders to go explore the area. Um, those kind of set dressings, man. How, how do you feel about it? I... I don't think, you know, there's anything, like, crazy about it. I think it's, like, mm. serving the purpose that it needs to serve with enough, um, I guess, like, what's the word? Um, like, kayfabe around it to, to you know, make it make it believable and understandable and, right. you know, make, make it coherent enough to, to, to lose yourself into it and be like, yeah, okay, you know, I, I buy this world. Yeah, and... I do like how even in the beginning, they sprinkle a few things that still make you raise an eyebrow, whether it be the introduction of... Have you been introduced to Fairy yet? Yeah, I like Fairy, Jared. Fairy's, yep. fairy's the, the level of uh, asshole AI that I kind of like. And so 
we have the introduction to fairy, you know, forcing, I guess, Bell, in our case, Belle to agree to terms she hasn't read because Matt. Mm-hmm. Classic. <laughs> pretty topical. Pretty topical. Uh-huh. And then, of course, we have Wise and Belle also hinting at their own reasons for doing what they want to do and especially going into, you know, these quarantine zones. Mm-hmm. Um, but Matt, mm-hmm. have to ask final in terms of characters we met. What's your take on the the goofballs of the cunning hairs? Jared, I like the I like the cunning hairs. Um, yeah, I I think they're you know a good what do you call it first team. They set the tone of the world very nicely. Yep, Jaren, I know last week that I said, hey, I like playing ranged characters in this kind of game. I don't like how Billy yeah. plays. <laughs> Billy is not a great character. Yeah. Uh, Especially since I believe he is, I don't know, it, there's just something about Billy's play style where I think the way the tutorial introduces you, mm-hmm. Matt, you know, as we said, this is the type of game where you want your main one to be out there 80% of the time. Yeah. Where I think it does, the tutorial does a disservice because you kind of have to play Billy like a DPS and it doesn't feel great, Matt. Mm-hmm. I think most of the tutorial I was just using on B. Even though you probably yeah. shouldn't be in terms of what do you call it, efficiency. And it also pains me, but Nicole, great support, but of course she's a support character. You're not supposed to mm-hmm. kind of have her on the field that much, uh, which yeah. is kind of a shame. I, I like Nicole, that mm-hmm. you know, girl who's trying to be tough, but on the inside she's a, really a softie. Yeah, you know, Nicole. Uh, despite how she's both kind of that, you know. Part unfortunate, but part she still has her head on her shoulders. I think a uh, good introduction as well. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Matt, I guess we I didn't ask you, what what team are you rocking right now? Uh, Jaren, right now I am running, uh, of course, Jane Doe as my DPS. Yep. I'm, uh, I have Lyacon in there to put uh, just like stuns out. And I am I have Piper just because I need something to trigger uh, Jane Doe's, what do you call it? Fair. Uh, like her, what's it called? The team ability? I can't remember the actual term for it. Where you have like someone of the matching. Oh, do you mean the anomaly or the attribute anomaly? Yeah, like, yeah, because like Jane's like, um, I guess like skill or whatever it is. Like what, her like team skill makes it so that, oh, when she has someone of a matching. Yeah. Who's also like an anomaly type or anomaly DPS. Um, They, they, she can just put more, what do you call it? Of the anomaly Disorder stacks or damage or something, yeah. Jared, the terminology in this game is a, is a little bit uh, hard for me, I guess. But yeah, you know. still trying to get my head around that mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Matt, I too, uh, Matt. Luckily, I was able to roll a Grace. So ah, my team yes, right now yeah. is Jane, Grace, and Seth. But Matt, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the W drive, I was able to get the one for Rena. So Matt, oh, mm-hmm. hopefully, I get a Rena sometime in the near future to kind of complete that um, oh man you know team that tr- that s rarity team mm-hmm. uh i mean Jared, but... like i i keep thinking about whether i want to try to get jane doe's like w drive but i yes. feel like that would be a as good as it is i feel like that would be a waste of my free to play uh <laughs> like what do you call it poly polychrome mm-hmm. where I don't know. It was the same with me for Genshin where, you know, I was saving so much for Ayaka and Mm -hmm. every time I would roll a new character, I would never try to roll for their weapon as well. Because again, uh, not trying to spend money if I can. uh, And when you do that, you have to prioritize. For me personally, I always prioritize characters over Mm -hmm. weapons, even if they're not um, that, you know, I guess efficient because you know you don't yeah. have to drive you don't have your weapon and in the case here you don't have dupes because matt oh man yeah. uh, mm-hmm. i don't think i'm going to push you know super content but if it's anything like genshin you can kind of get to while you can't push like super hard content you can still get your fair share of end game rewards i'm hoping yeah um z3 is the same way as well but yeah i have to admit that mm-hmm. in my uh, mission to roll a jane i got was able to get six dupes of Anby, and you get a background for your profile, and I thought that was Ooh, nice. Cool, man. man, yeah, uh, like, I was looking at the... Jaren, okay, so... ZCZ is, I think, my second gotcha that I've, like... Or, like, Arknights, I guess, is the first gotcha that I ever really, you know, spent a lot of time in. Yes. And 
from what I understand, Arknights is a very, very forgiving, like free to play, uh, for the free to play like experience. Mm-hmm. And looking at ZZZ, I think like the the biggest shock for me is the amount of power you get from having dupes compared to yeah. Arknights. Or like you know, Arknights is oh here's just like some minor stat um, increases or cost like decreases. Whereas like I guess in in ZZZ. That you get a lot of power out of having, you know, dupes for these characters, and man, Jared, I, <laughs> I wish, I wish I was in Ark Knights a little bit now. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how they get you, Matt. That's mm-hmm. how they get you. And then, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I think with these types of games, you know, it is, you know, I goofed in the morning of oh that dopamine hit, or in the beginning of the episode that dopamine hit of oh this card pays for this whole box, uh-huh. but. Uh-huh. I feel like with gacha games in particular, and as they get more high in quality, uh, it, it it does become a test of knowing your limits, knowing yeah. if you can spend in it. Where you know, not to get into the whole uh, loot box argument or not mm-hmm. argument, but discourse that is in the past. I feel like. With the mistake zone, there between the both of us, there is this. As much as we talk about all the garbage we buy, <laughs> uh-huh. there is still a level of responsibility that we have. And you know, if I think this has to be said at some point too, if you have that type of personality who might be tempted to spend more than you should, especially if it's something like FOMO, if it's something like oh, I need to min max this character, then as much as I might be enjoying the production value of, you know, Zone Zone Zero mm-hmm. uh, or whatever it's called, um, I can say that if you have a, if you feel like you might be tempted to spend more than you can, then to kind of avoid something like this, to find another game that might be able to scratch your itch if you're able, that you can just buy once or something. Because mm-hmm. Matt, as someone who's been playing mobile gacha games for, you know, a better part of a decade now. It uh-huh. it does become that struggle of I want so I want this, but would I feel good about uh putting money into it? Or likewise, oh I've saved for this character in eight for this whole year. I barely was able to get them. Uh I don't know, man. Uh-huh. It, it's being able to know your limits and making sure it doesn't get its hooks into oh, you. Jared, so. I, I think if I had their hooks in me, Jared. Oh, no, like, no. I already feel like I want to... Okay, Jared, I think this is another difference that is um, that like I already noticed between uh, Arknights and this game. Mm-hmm. Which is that in Arknights, I was more so rolling for characters that like you know I, I wanted because they seemed cool. Whereas I'm already kind of looking at Zona Zone Zero in terms of like team comp, and Jaren, this next upcoming limited banner makes me really want Bernice because I don't have Grace. Matt, mm-hmm. we're in too deep. We're in too deep. This was a mistake. <laughs> this is the mistake zone. Jaren, I gotta. You know, I, I'm at the start of the game still. I'm still getting. You know that 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 f- nice flow of um currency yep. that they give you when you're when you're starting out uh these gacha games to to get your hooks in you jaren i i think you know maybe i gotta i gotta you know just save all this currency for for bernice rolls bernice bernice oh, I, forgot to, mm-hmm. I forgot to ask now are you doing the web login too for your rewards? yes i'm doing the web login okay, as well good good yeah uh have you i guess since i'm not sure where you are have you unlocked the bang boo like the bunny robot gacha as well uh yes yeah Okay. Jared, I don't know if that, I'm supposed to save those or not. That's a currency I'm like iffy on if I'm saving. Uh, I honestly made the plug boo for my Jane Disorder team, my the one I want. Luckily, I was able to get it within five rows, and now I'm just saving for uh, just in case um, a character I want in the future uses a different plug boo, so I can just roll uh, in there. Yes. Is that yeah? I'm just like cool. I think right now I just have it set to the one that has the gun for a face, or a hat, <laughs> because I, I it seems like the the only one that like would would benefit my team in any way. Mm-hmm. I like the bang boo designs. I think they're really funny. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Jaren, there's some that I <laughs> I want to roll with because I like the design, 
like um is plug boot the 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 one that kind of just is like yellow with like the kind of like see-through head i think so yeah like i like the design of that one but it, yep. it's useless to me <laughs> fair fair uh-huh. oh man that yeah it's I, i'm kind of glad that the next one is the i think the sons of caledon yeah with, as you said um bernice and I forget, was it Caesar or something? But Matt, mm-hmm. you know, my heart's with uh, uh, Miyabi. I, I need to get uh, Wolf Ayaka. <laughs> oh, man. And hopefully I'll be able to save in the future. And well. I feel but, like she would just be, you know, replace the, she'd take the place of like Jane Doe. So you're, you're going to be rolling off another team. Yeah. But I, I know with my previous account for my, you know, Genshin main, that was my Coletta team. And I was able to get. I think Soldier 11 mm-hmm. uh, there too. Plus you get Ben for free during chapter two. So mm-hmm. had that fire team done, but Matt had to go with, uh, once I rolled Grace on this account, I had to go all in on the Ooh, account, but yeah, yeah. not super all in to get her W drive, but mm-hmm. we got the plug boo at least. But mm-hmm. uh, Matt, before we go on, there's one aspect that I also wanted to touch upon that I didn't mention last week yeah. where you, we have the combat aspect of Z3, What do you think about the grid-based exploration aspect of the game? I kind of... I more so like it when it's the puzzle kind of grid-based exploration. I don't like it so much when it's kind of just the, hey, get from this place to this place kind of stuff. But, you know, kind of like the sliding puzzles I like. But for the most part, I I wish it was faster. Even when it's like fast-forwarded, I feel like it's still kind of slow. So when you were exploring the quarantine zone, it does bring you into, I don't want to say it's a mini game per se, but it is just this grid that you explore with, you know, a bang boo or so. Mm -hmm. And I agree, Matt, when it does do the different puzzles, I know in chapter two, you get some commissions that are really unique when it comes to the puzzle layouts. But I think in terms of the story beats when you're just trying to get from point A to point B, getting, you know, your observation data along the way. I feel like that could go a lot faster. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And But I think it's pretty cool too and a unique way to really have you, quote unquote, explore the quarantine zone. Um, another aspect I wanted to touch upon real quick, Matt, mm-hmm. the time cycle is... I feel like it's kind of weird too. Where, yeah. You know, your day is divided into morning, afternoon, evening, and midnight. And different commissions, different, uh, I guess, side quests are only available at certain times or can only be completed at certain times. Where, yeah. In between that and the fact that you can, if you go into certain story beats, it will lock you out from doing the different side stuff until the story stuff is done. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of weird time management and yeah, it, as you unlock more areas like the construction yard, the outpost, I do find myself, maybe there's something I'm missing, but something that's also wearing me down is, okay, it's the morning now. Got to circle through all the different places just to see if something new comes up. Okay, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Progress. Now it's the afternoon. Got to circle all around where I know when you go into the map selection, it will kind of tell you if, there's something there per se, but oh, okay, I didn't know that. I got a lot of things to keep track on, but uh, yeah. finally, for me, before I give you the last word, Matt, mm-hmm. uh, before I we start recording, got put this on my Steam Deck. Um, Ooh, okay, nice. Was it that hard to set it, up or no? So apparently, I thought I would need to get you know some sort of hero, like one of the emula- Windows emulators or so. But mm-hmm. it was as easy as you know downloading Chrome on desktop mode, downloading the EXE from the MiHoYo site, and then just adding it to Steam, putting it uh, running Proton Experiment, and just you know adding it to Steam and starting it up. So I was really mm-hmm. surprised at uh-huh. how it worked. And right now, I haven't done combat right now. I've just been running around Bell, some of the areas doing the, you know, in world mini um, side quest. So maybe mm-hmm. next week I'll let you know how the actual combat is. Um, you know, it's me just going through the settings, you know, capping it at 60, putting everything to mid 
medium to low. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we'll see just because Matt Mm -hmm. wanted, since I might be traveling this weekend, won't have access to my desktop. Uh. Uh, Golden Week ends this week and apparently that's an event we have to do so hate to put this on you matt but Ooh. gotta grind out to the end of chapter three so we can do somehow do golden week within the next five days oh, because God. i believe there's a golden or a yellow w drive you can get from that so oh damn uh, <laughs> oh. my thoughts exactly matt my thoughts exactly uh, but at least you'll see that fun anime cutscene uh, mm-hmm. that I hinted at. But oh, Jaren, sorry. What's up? Quick, quick thing that just reminded me about when you said anime. Jaren, what language are you playing this game in? Uh, or oh, audio language, I guess. Audio right now is still English. I haven't oh, okay. switched it yet. I, I probably should, but mm-hmm. um, voice acting is like okay for the most part. Yeah. Uh, I think the English I, voice I'll acting be... is actually pretty, pretty like solid. Matt, I, I really like Bell's voice act. Matt, mm-hmm. uh, I I kind of like, even though, again, the dialogue choices don't really matter, like playing Bell as kind of that snar- uh, snarky character yeah. with a heart of gold. But yeah, um, maybe I'll ask you next week, but I'm kind of into Kaleva's English voice actress. I, I feel like oh, okay. it's a pretty good okay. voice for her. Mm-hmm. And when you meet her crew... Uh, yeah, I think generally the English voice acting is pretty good, or I'm enjoying it for the most part, but I might, I, I want to see what Japanese voice actors mm-hmm. and actresses we got here. Maybe I'll switch if I recognize any, but mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. Uh, surprise at our Z3 check-in, uh, uh-huh. but before we go and maybe <laughs> talk about this game on and off within the next couple of months, uh, f- closing thoughts for this week. Jaren, um, actually, the, th- the reason I wanted to bring up the language callouts thing is just because I wanted to bring up, or the language thing is that I wanted to bring up the callouts. Because, right. Jaren, I had initially, you know, just like, you know, weaving it, I, on my first playthrough, kind of just set it to Japanese out of uh, habit, played that mm-hmm. way for a while, and then, you know, while I was playing on my, the account that I settled on, I decided to play it in English just to see how, like, how the English voices are. And that's when I noticed that during battle, there are actually, like, call-outs happening yeah. that are telling you, hey, dodge, which is actually super useful when it's, like, it, an enemy that is not in front of you. Oh. I I never... I didn't even get that. Huh. Yeah. Now like, I feel bad. Because, mm-hmm. like, like I, know th- I know that, like, you know, there's those little arrows that, like, flash when, um you know, someone off-screen is about to attack you. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well, but like you know, having an actual audio call out say "Hey, incoming attack" or something is so so useful. I, I I need to really pick that up. All I really picked up was I do like how if the characters know each other, they'll kind of comment like, "Oh yeah," playing yeah. as a uh, Lycon, and how you would tag him in from Corrin. He'll say something about Corrin. I thought that was pretty nice mm-hmm, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like uh, I like yeah. these interactions as well. Uh, one more thing I wanted to ask you, Matt. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. what do you think about you managing the video store? Oh, Jared, I I just kind of get rid of that. It's a it's a video store. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really understand that actually uh, mechanic of the game. Where so at the beginning of every day, you're able to recommend or put out three recommendations. Plus, you know, pick your promoter for the video store, mm-hmm. and that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I oddly like. I know it's just chores. It's like a small little throwaway thing. But I'm glad when I get to when you unlock new videos from you know story or side missions or side commissions, and you're able to recommend them based on the preferences that people are looking for. I know it's mm-hmm. like a quick throwaway. It's essentially oh, each day you have three tags. You just select videos that match up with those tags and you know, that's it. Occasionally an NPC will request something and you recommend one of those tags. But yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like it's nice set dressing that adds to the overall spectacle of the game, That I don't know. I think it's just <laughs> me. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of set dressing, have you done any of the, other than when you had to do it for the tutorial, did you, have you popped into the arcade for any of the mini games? Oh, yeah. I, I kind of like the, uh, I, I like, I tried doing the snake game. I tried doing the, yeah. like, the digging game. Like, you know, those are, those are standard games. I, I didn't, I specifically haven't touched the multiplayer because, you know, Jaren, as we said on the show before, I'm against uh, social interaction. <laughs> it scares me, Matt. It scares me. Mm-hmm. 
Jaren, I think the thing that like really, really worries me about that game is that um, at least for the snake one, you're on a team with somebody else, and I don't want to let somebody else down like that. Not when you even in the tutorial, I accidentally whiffed it <laughs> right before the ending, and I felt so bad for Billy. Uh, oh man. Uh but yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, second closing thoughts for Zemma's uh this week, Jaren. I, I. <laughs> Jared, I think I'm like addicted to just rerolling because I'm thinking about making more more accounts. <laughs> Matt, uh-huh. it's there, there's just something about a good roll. Jared, and I'm just, it's, te- I it's want technically that house roll. money, Matt. Hmm. It's technically house money. Uh-huh. Hmm. I I believe you'll be able to get a Grace and a Jane roll eventually. Jared, I want that roll. Not only do I want that roll, I want them in the same one. So that like, with an with an A class roll beside them, so that it just says like ass at the bottom of my screen. <laughs> that would uh, be pretty good, Matt. That would be pretty good. Yeah. But Matt, mm-hmm. uh, that was on the zone zero for longer than I thought we would talk about. Yeah, and that that was uh, guess... <laughs> Jared. That was more than uh, an hour of on the zone zero. Uh, I guess when a substantial update comes out or when Miyabi comes back. We'll check it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I guess next week, I'll just quickly talk about the Steam Deck performance and seeing if we were able to finish the Golden Week event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Jerry, we should should add each other as friends now that we have, uh, you know, kind of solidified on accounts. That's true. That's true, Matt. That's true. Uh, We can do that right after. But until then, Matt, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's that time of the week. Oh, right, right, right. (laughs) Where... Was it your turn to do Don't Match Me this week? Yes, Jaren, it was my turn to do the Don't Match Me Challenge okay. this week. And right. mm-hmm. as always, we are, you know, bringing the Don't Match Me Challenge where uh, one of us is going to ask a bunch of questions. The goal of you, the listener, while you're playing along is to not match the answer that we're giving. And this week, in honor of, you know, ZZZ, my, <laughs> my, uh, my topic is loosely based on gambling. Okay. So, you know, starting from the top. My first question in this gambling adjacent don't match me challenge is to name any trading card game. Jared, I'm so glad. Like I, I didn't know you were gonna open with the Pokemon trading card game, but I'm really glad you opened with the Pokemon trading <laughs> card <worked> game. <laughs> Matt, uh-huh. you rolled the dice. You rolled the dice, roll the dice. <laughs> So, just, oh, just name any trading card game okay. in three, two, one. Jaren, I got to throw it back to to the old faithful, the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Not the, the basis of our friendship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you went with the old hotness for us. I went with my current one. Had to go with Y Schwartz. Mm. Don't know if I'm saying that right, but got to collect those <laughs> uh, gold full signature Hollow Live cards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Question two is name a game that has a casino or casino themed area. So, you know, as long as the area, you know, I guess has gambling going on in it or, you know, had gambling going on in it. I think that's like a valid place or or like game to game to name. So name that game in three, two, one. Jaren, I, of course, have to go with Fallout New Vegas. The classic. The classic. The classic, Matt. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. when I think casino and gaming, I think about a few years ago when a lot of Hollow Live members were playing Dragon Quest XI. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's, I don't know, that's the first one to come to my mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe also a lot of people would have picked like Final Fantasy VII for Gold Saucer. Yeah, other the ones I was throwing in my mind, uh, I'm pretty sure there was a casino level in a Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably with Def Jam, Fight for New York 2. I'm not too sure. Underground gambling was happening mm-hmm. somewhere in that game. <laughs> I remember Casino Night Zone was one of the the levels in, I think, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else, Matt? Mm-hmm. Try and true gambling in Yakuza. There's probably a casino there yeah, somewhere. Probably, uh, yeah, somewhere. probably. Is. There's also the, uh, you know, the game corner in the Pokemon games. Okay, but mm-hmm. we have Fallout New Vegas and uh, Dragon Quest XI. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Ho- ho- so hopefully our friends are still on it too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, kind of keeping with this kind of casino 
type of question. Jaren, question three is name any non card game based casino game. So any casino game that doesn't use cards. Not hmm. Which vacation movie was it where they ended up going to that janky Vegas uh, casino to try to win money? Do you know what I'm talking about? Was it Vegas Vacation? I don't know. I know it's not Rat Race, which is what I thought of at first. Matt, I love Rat I love Rat Race. <laughs> Same, Jared. Same. Matt? Uh-huh. Next time one of us goes on vacation. <laughs> We're going to do a Rat Race. Let's take Rat Race episode. We have to. <laughs> Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. Okay. So non. Um, okay. Jared, I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I hope it holds up and like you know I doesn't become problematic. It's not problematic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, <laughs> name, name that casino game in three, two, one. Jared, I went with craps. Oof. That scared me for a second. Mm. I went with roulette. Ooh. Okay. So fourth question. You know, in honor of our heavy ZZZ, uh, you know, episode today. Yeah. Uh, just name any MiHoYo game. Any game by that by, by MiHoYo. So name that game in three, two, one. I'm going with the first game I've ever heard about from them, which is Honkai Impact 3rd. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was also the first game Ooh. I heard of them and was the first miHoYo game I played so I had to go with uh HI3 as well Matt mm-hmm. you got me you got, got him. me Matt. You got him. Jared I've never played that game I don't even know what kind of game it is I guess no I it's their game I installed it in my phone but I all I associate with miHoYo now is Genshin mm-hmm. I should probably log in to play with Ayaka oh, <laughs> for a bit oh man Jared my fifth question and my Least, I guess, gambling-related one, but more so a ZZZ-related one. Jaren, and uh, players at home, name a tier. Any tier, I think, from S to F. I think, uh, you know, you just gotta, gotta name any one of those tiers. So, name that tier in three, two, one. I'm picking B tier. Which is Ooh. where I, I like to think that I, I exist. <laughs> no, Matt. Matt, mm-hmm. you're an S-tier friend, which is what I picked. Ooh. Thanks, Jared. Jared, Jared, I think you are S-tier as well. Uh, see at best. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, mm-hmm. wanna, ho- hopefully all our friends made it through. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn, that Honkai Impact 3rd really got to me. They got you. It really they got, got you. to me. But... Until then, Matt, I want to thank you, as always, for joining me this week, uh, editing th- this podcast, and of course, mm-hmm. uh, bringing our weekly Don't Match Me Challenge. Yo, thanks, Jaren. I, of course, want to thank you for, you know, hosting this episode. But Jaren, I I want to not thank you for, for pulling me into this, I'm sure, hellhole that uh, ZCZ is going to be on, on my future. Oh, man, Matt. Uh, can't wait till we talk about our roles in a few months again. Oh, man. <laughs> but Matt, mm-hmm. who else should we thank this week? I want to thank uh, Pokemon, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. I want to thank Concierges. I don't Ooh. even know if I'm saying that. Matt, I, I can't speak. Properly. I think that's how that word is said. Uh, Matt, got to thank Jane. Mm-hmm. Got to thank Belle. Mm-hmm. Want to thank Nicole. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to thank some Lycon too, like that guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool dude. I okay, want to meet okay. him in the story too. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, I mm. like the name Ambi. I think that's a good name too. Yeah, that's a really good name. <laughs> Thanks, Ambi. Mm-hmm. Uh, but until then, Matt, please take it away. This has been a mistake zone, and we're all out of polychrome. It's called polychrome, right? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's all premium currency somewhere.